Good day to you. Hope you're having a wonderful day. I want to talk to you about the good life. So many times we look at self-help books and articles and we look to these gurus that supposedly have the perfect life and all this. We listen to the, the latest trend on how to improve ourselves, how to have a better life, right? How to be happy, how to have joy and contentment, how to feel safe in this world and enjoy living, just enjoy our lives. Sadly, we tend to ignore the best authority on the idea of living a good life. The one person who can truly help us to have a good life here. And yes, that is the Lord. Why do we pray and seek God's help everywhere else, yet we look to other flawed people to help us improve ourselves? Should we really turn down God's advice in favor of man's? No, we shouldn't. We should be aware that the creator of the universe, of everything, can tell us how best to navigate this life and how to live this life and enjoy this life and have a good life. Now, where does God give us this advice? In the Bible. If we look at Proverbs chapter 1, verses 2-7, through seven, to know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase learning, and a man of understanding will attain wise counsel, to understand a proverb and an enigma the words of the wise and their riddles. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. This is the purpose of Proverbs specifically and the Bible in general, to teach us all these things, wisdom, judgment, and justice, discretion, and understanding. These things are what we need to have a good life. If we look at Hosea chapter 4, verse 6, My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because you have rejected knowledge, I also will reject you from being priest for me. Because you have forgotten the law of your God, I also will forget your children. The lack of knowledge of God's word is what destroys us. When we do not know how to live in God's universe, we suffer and we flounder. God created everything in a certain way. There's certain spiritual laws that also apply to the physical, but there's certain guidelines that we should follow to have a good life. Without God, we are on our own in a world we don't know how to navigate. And that's not the life we want. Here is the life we are pursuing. If we look at Psalm 1, Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree, planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Again, notice what this man does. His delight is in the law of the Lord, or we would say God's word or the Bible. He meditates on the Bible, on God's teachings. If we do that, then we are like that tree. We have that water of life and produce good fruit. We prosper in life, and I mean truly prosper. I'm not talking about wealth and material goods, but we prosper in our spiritual lives, in our peace and joy of living. Look at Philippians chapter 4, verses 4-9. through nine. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, 
I will say, Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. Now to break this down, we're told to rejoice, and it is repeated to get our attention, to draw our attention to it. Why? Because when you are rejoicing, when you are counting your blessings and you're looking at the good things in life, you will just, it will just naturally help you to have joy and peace and to make you feel better. You see the good part of your life when you're doing that, the blessings and the benefits. And again, it has that positive effect on you. It's very good for you to think on things like that. Remember, the Lord is near. He is available to us always. The Lord is always with us. And that's to let us know that He is there. He is available to us. Then we're told not to be anxious. Do not worry. Instead, pray to God. Ask Him to fulfill our needs. And thank Him for doing just that. Every day, our needs are fulfilled. Every day we eat, every day we sleep, every day we have clothing, every day He is fulfilling our needs. Thank God for all His blessings. When you are looking at your blessings and being thankful, it lightens your heart. Again, it reminds you of God's love for you. Finally, meditate on the good things in life. All the good things we see in the world the Bible and the sunsets and the sunrises, the stars in the evening, our comfy chairs, our funny spouse or child, all these things in our lives that, that just bring us these little moments of joy and peace. Think on all these things. Notice them and appreciate them and think on them. You know, sometimes do you ever just like look at your spouse and you just smile, you're thankful that you have them there, that they're who they are, that type of thing. Just just little things sometimes, just very subtle things. You look at your child and you're just, you're proud of them. You're happy, you know, for them, for something they've done, or, or maybe just that they're a good person and they're also someone that you like to be around, you know, and that type of thing. Just very, these very minor things we tend to take for granted are so much more important than wealth and material goods. So notice and think on the good. Do not let the devil lie to you and tell you life is awful and horrible and hopeless because that's what he wants you to think. But there is always hope and there's always goodness in the Lord. And beyond this, beyond ourselves, the Lord also gives us purpose in this life. And sometimes our problem is that we don't have purpose. We're just sitting around waiting for purpose. But purpose doesn't usually just like drop in your lap. Usually you have to kind of seek a purpose. If we look at Matthew chapter 28 verses 18 through 20, And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. The most important thing we have to share in this life 
is the gospel of Jesus. To let people know that they can have eternal life, forgiveness, and redemption. That Jesus already paid that price for all of us. He took all of our sin to the cross. He paid that price as if he committed all our sin, which he definitely did not. But that made him the perfect sacrifice that he was sinless. And then he took our guilty verdict. He went and took our punishment for us. So there's nothing greater or better that we can share than the gospel. The truth of Jesus that leads to salvation. We can't save people, but we can point them to the Lord who can save them. There is no greater satisfaction than helping someone in their relationship with the Lord, whether that be in the very beginning to help them start, or if that helps them in an ongoing way to maintain and maybe improve their relationship with the Lord, or to renew a relationship with God if they've fallen away or they've gone through some hard times and maybe maybe they stumbled, maybe they, they fell and they need to get back up. But all this is a great thing to be able to help people in some way like that. And, and in other mundane things, there's, it's also great to be able to help others. You know, that's why we have charities that we give to. That's why we have uh, food banks and stuff where we, we try to help the needy to have things. And we should definitely be a part of that. But the ultimate gift that we can give anyone is that knowledge of Jesus and of salvation and redemption. And I would encourage anyone who is not, who has not been baptized into Christ, I would encourage you to be baptized, find a local church that follows the Bible and that would be willing to baptize you and help you on your journey. So I want to thank you for listening. Hope you have a wonderful day. May God bless you and keep you safe. And remember, God loves you.